Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. This is part 3 to my tutorial series where I teach you guys about GD script in Godot. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2, I'll leave a link in the description to a playlist below so you can check them out before or after watching this part. Before getting started, I do want to quickly mention that just over two weeks ago now, I released Act 1 of Mushi's Kitchen Reheated for free on Itch.io. If you'd like to check it out, be sure to. And if you do, don't forget to leave a rating and comment to let me know what you thought about the game. So in this part today, I'll be teaching you all about the basics of creating functions. If you do enjoy, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so as I mentioned before, what we're going to be doing in this part is I'm going to be showing you guys how to create functions. So in, I think, part one, I showed you guys, you know, the basic ready and process functions. But today I'm going to be teaching you all how to actually create your own functions. Since not only are there already pre-made functions in Godot that you can use, such as, you know, funk ready or funk process or funk physics process, but you can also just create your own functions as well. So let's do an example. So as you can see here I'm in my empty script. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write func and what this will do is this will let the script know that we want to create a new function and then you just want to press space afterwards and then now we can type in the name of our function. So the name of your function can be literally anything you want it to be. Uh, as an example I'm literally going to call this function skibbity toilet just because why not? So yeah, you can literally name your functions anything you want. And then with the parentheses, you don't have to put anything inside them. However, you can if you want to. It all depends on what you're doing for your script, but if there's a certain value that you want to be part of this function, then you can add that in. Like, you can just add in a name like value, for example. Just add that into your parentheses, and then what that means is that this function will now require a variable inside of the parentheses. So whenever you uh, want this function to happen, uh, if you have any sort of like you know variable that you want to be uh, put into this uh, function, then you need to make sure that whenever you refer to this function, uh, that you do have a variable put inside of it. So yeah. And you can also define the variable inside of your function if you want to as well. Like if you want it to be specifically a float, you could just do the two dots and then write float. So that basically just lets the script know like, hey, I want this variable uh, in this function to specifically be a float. So any, any uh, value that you try put into this function, uh, you know, if it's not a float, it won't be accepted. So yeah. So what we're going to do here, for an example for this tutorial, is I want this to be a string. So I'm just going to call this something like, um, just a skibbity string as an example, because you can literally uh, name the value in here, whatever you want to. And then I'm just going to do string as the type. And then I'm going to do the two dots again in indent. And then here is where we need to do the actual functionality of our function. So what I want to do for this basic function is I basically want to make it so whenever we press a key, uh, whatever string is put into this variable here uh, will be printed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go print and then parentheses and then we're going to write skibbity string since that's what we want to be printed out into the, uh, the console. By the way, I just noticed that I forgot the, uh, the I after k in skibbity string so there we go and boom so now we have our function so what this function does is it collects a string variable and then it prints that string variable out into the console all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to make this function here happen so what we're going to do is we're going to go a few lines down and i'm going to write func underscore process and what we want to do is we want to make use of the process function so I'm gonna go tab and boom so now we have the process function in our script so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go indent and we're gonna write if input dot is action just pressed so I'm pretty sure in part two I believe 
I taught you guys about um, doing, uh, you know, the input system, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in part two I did. But just in case you guys need a reminder, um, if you don't have any uh, inputs set up in your project already, what you do is you go project, project settings, input map. And then here you can actually do the input maps for your uh, project. So let's say, for example, you want your player to move forward, right? So what you would do is you would write in an action name like forward. You can enter in whatever name you want for your actions. By the way, you don't have to do forward if you don't want to. And then you just press enter and boom, now we have a new action. And you can add as many actions as you want to, of course. But yeah. So with this forward action that I've just done here, if we click on the plus icon, you can then add a key to this specific action. So for this example, I'm gonna do the E key. So I'm, I just press the E key on my keyboard and now it's picked it up. So now if I press OK, now the forward action here is connected to the E key. So now we can close that. So now back into our process function here. So as you can see, we have if input dot is action just pressed. So we're checking if a key has just been pressed and what that key will be is the forward function, or I mean the forward action, I mean. So what we're checking for here is if the forward action, or more specifically the E key, we're checking if that has been pressed. Then we're gonna do the two dots. And then if our forward action has been pressed, what will happen is our skibbity toilet function. So we're gonna go write skibbity toilet, and then what we need to do now is because we actually have a, a, a variable in the parentheses of the function here, as you can see, if we don't enter in a variable into the parentheses down here, we actually get a error which says too few arguments for skibbity toilet call expected at least one but received zero. And by the way, you can actually add as many variables as you want into your function if you wanted to add more. Like for example, um, I'm just going to do a few random ones here. Just a few random letters and numbers. And so because now we have a, now we have like four expected variables in this function, as you can see here, now our error has changed from expected at least one but received zero to now saying expected at least four but received zero because now our function requires four variables to be entered into it. So yeah, so we're just going to do the skibbity string from now on of course. And so what you want to enter into this uh, skibbity toilet function now is you want to actually enter in a string because, you know, the variable that this function that we made requires is a string. So what I'm going to do for my string here is I'm just going to write in something like, yo, I'm Omegonix. And so, yeah, so what will happen is whenever we press the forward action, the E key, what will happen is our skibbity toilet function will happen and the yo, I'm Omegonix string will be printed since the yo I'm on Magonic string will be the skibbity string in our skibbity toilet function. So now that this is all ready, we can actually go test this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go press play to test. And so now whenever I press the E key, let's see what happens. As you can see in the console, yo I'm on Magonix is being printed. So yeah, it works perfectly. Now what I want to do is I want to actually add a few more actions as well. So I'm just going to add like a, just a few random named actions. Um, interact and skibbity and then we'll just give these their own keys. So W and S. And then what I want to do is I don't want to copy this line of code here, just paste it twice. Then change the forward action to the other action names. Ooh. And then I also want to uh, change the uh, the string that's in the uh, that's in the function as well. Basically, what what I want to show here is how you can use uh, the same function to basically print you know whatever kind of string you want and not have to create multiple functions for it. You know, so that's what a uh, you know adding a variable. 
uh, into your into your custom function that's what that can also be useful for is you know just making sure that you only have one function for you know printing you know multiple kinds of strings for example right so yeah so we've got your mammogonics then we'll have a skibbity toilet and then this one down here will just be creeper so now if we go test again and then we press our keys oh wait I accidentally uh, forgot something I forgot to um, change this one from forward to skibbity that's what this action should be and what keys is that connected up to again? ah oh, yes, E, W, and S, alright so now when I press the keys E, W, and S as you can see different strings are being printed so yeah so anyways guys, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. Um, hopefully you all did learn something from it. Basically today I just taught you guys the basics of creating your own functions in Godot. So hopefully you did all enjoy and hopefully you guys can continue to learn more about Godot as you uh, go on your, uh, your journey of doing so. And so anyways, I'll see you all in the next part of this series. Bye bye.